Harvard Auditorium uh, by the Harvard Bookstore. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the way out. If those, if any of you have to leave early, be sure to leave early via the bookstore stand. Um, Can I interrupt? Uh, yes. Um, my wife is already uh, excoriating me for this, but I, I've waived royalties on the book to keep the price down, in part yes. because it is so long. So um, just think that if it's selling it on Amazon for 20 bucks, and if it's 800 pages, so just think of the last $200 page. Uh, 200 page book you bought for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so so with, with that calculation of price per page, uh, and, 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 the, and the, just think of the amount of pages that you've just received in the last 15 minutes. Um, but, uh, I, I will now uh, introduce Professor Sheila Jasanoff for first comments. Uh, professor Jasanoff is a four timer professor of science and technology studies here at Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government. She has had a, um, she's really a Yes. But so you're going last. Okay. All right. So we're we're moving linearly. So in that case, I will, I'll proceed then to Charles to uh, to John Sharfstein. Commissioner Sharfstein was appointed by President Obama to be the principal deputy commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration. He uh, he served uh, prior to that as acting commissioner for the Food and Drug Administration um, uh, from March 29th to May 25th of 2009. And uh, Dr. Sharfstein is um, in many ways a product of of this university. He's a 1991 graduate of Harvard College, a 1996 graduate of Harvard Medical School, a 1999 graduate of the combined residency program uh, in pediatrics at the Boston Children's Hospital and Boston Medical Center, and a 2001 graduate of the fellowship in general pediatrics at the Boston University School of Medicine. Um, and he served as commissioner for health of the city of Baltimore from December 2005 through March 2009, at which point he was elevated to the position of, of uh, acting commissioner for the Food and Drug Administration. So in some ways, uh, this, the, the meteoric rise of Dr. Sharfstein is testament to his, um, his particularly keen acumen in issues surrounding policy um, and management uh, and regulatory questions surrounding uh, pharmaceutical and other forms of therapeutics. Um, in many ways, this is a, we, 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 are, we are very lucky to welcome him back to Boston for his commentary in this book. Dr. Sharfstein. and thank you for having me here. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking to me that Judy Vishniak is here since she oversaw my undergraduate thesis. <laughs> <laughs> kind of rattles me a little, but I'm going to try to persevere. Um, it's really great to see you. And it's really great to be here for such an interesting book. And, you know, fortunately, there's not too much of a, at this point, I can say, I've, even as I got and started reading it, I was already telling all sorts of people around to, to buy it and to look for it. And it was really fascinating. And, it, it sort of was like uh, when I had my child and I was a pediatrician, I was like a completely different doctor for kids up to two months of age and then four months of age. And, you know, I just related to parents. As I was working through the book, certain topics I felt like I could really talk about um, with a little bit more authority than other times. I actually talked to like 2,000 pharmaceutical industry physicians a couple weeks ago, and um, I, was, I told them about how uh, Merrill initially proposed um, the studies for thalidomide. This is a group of doctors that does studies within the pharmaceutical industry, and they all kind of uh, laughed at you know the kind of simple um, and erroneous tests that had initially been proposed, which I knew from having read the book, and I plugged them all to, to buy it. So um, <laughs> your, your wife may wind up quite angry. <laughs> um, what I thought was my, my, I'm going to speak uh, for just a few minutes, but I've, and I, I was struggling with how to approach this because I feel both like I'm protagonist in the book, it, not that I'm in the book, but just sort of in the middle of the world, my daily life sort of is assumed by some of the same considerations. And on the call with the senior staff this morning at FDA, I told everyone I was coming up here, and someone said, you know, in a sentence, you know, summarize the whole thing, and I, I said, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Because, you know, and so many of the things we're struggling with now, so much resonates in here. So I thought what I would do is explain how I see this issue of reputation, uh, this issue of reputation, just in my daily work at FDA. Kind of just to explain my perspective there and separate that out. Then I'm going to just try to take a little step back and just give some, a couple of thoughts about the book. Um, when I was a health commissioner in Baltimore, um, I noticed something interesting. I was involved in a lot of different types of activities. I was the chair of the board of the animal shelter, chair of the substance abuse board, chair of the board of the infant mortality nonprofit. I also dealt with the mayor and all these things. And 
one thing I realized is that there were some really tough parts of my job, and there were people who really didn't want to see change happen in a certain area. And I, for some reason, I got involved in some, you know, people would show up at my office and have some weird ideas, and I did some things that were not maybe completely, you know, the core public health issues facing a city like Baltimore. But I did them anyway. One of the things I did was uh, we called attention to the lack of evidence around um, cough and cold medicines for kids. Um, we did something around Medicare Part D uh, transition because we knew it would be a problem. We set up a hotline for people. But what I noticed was that there was like a, big, a good story about what we were doing in the paper that all my other fights in different areas or all the other things I was trying to do got a whole lot easier. On the other hand, if there was something in the, about the health department, you know, um, failing to close a restaurant that should have been closed, for example, that happened, then, you know, people kind of looked at me a little bit differently. And, and I realized that, like, these little projects, you know, those weren't really why I was health commissioner, but if I didn't have a lot of them going, I, I was really hard to make progress in some of the other areas. And that how people kind of viewed the health department and were we on the move or not on the move just mattered a tremendous amount in the city. And then I was appointed to the transition team um, while I was health commissioner, and I was, uh, because of a weird stroke of fate, um, assigned the task of being the lead for the FDA, the, the FDA part of the transition. And in that, we got to meet with um, like 50 or 60 different outside groups and internal groups, and we really got the theme that the agency had lost credibility. To me, credibility is kind of how I think of reputation. You know, I think that is sort of like the flip side of the coin. Um, and that we heard that from consumer groups, we heard that from industry groups that were upset that when the agencies talked about things they did in a way, you know, it wasn't credible so the people didn't feel like, you know, when they commented on um, a uh, safety issue that people believe the agency anymore, we heard that inside the agency that they were frustrated, people were frustrated and um, that was a big problem for the agency. Right about the time I was working on the transition team, the Associated Press did a huge story um, that was called FDA, a failed agency. <coughs> and they asked people, like, what is it, how does it feel to be a failed agency? They asked the acting commissioner. Which, you know, was tough. And he, and he was, I remember, I was looking at this and he said something like, you know, what kind of question is that? You know, but it's a tough question to be asked. And there, there were a whole series of stories around that time. And what became obvious to me is that, you know, credibility is critical currency for the FDA because it means that when FDA says something is safe, that people believe it, they use it, that really matters um, for people using products that can save their lives. On the other hand, the flip is true. When FDA says something isn't safe, people have to believe it or else they can get harmed. And, and, and um, if there's too much pushback there, and then the potential of the agency to really um, advance health is, is significantly compromised.